telling evil to take a seat. Here's a look at the Hasbro Star Wars The Vintage Collection, the Star Wars Return of the Jedi Emperor's Throne Room. Rising up from the North Pole of the Second Death Star is the 100-story isolation tower reserved for the Emperor from which he oversees the battle station's operations. The tower's four spokes house a throne room, Palpatine's private chambers, and a vault reserved for Sith artifacts. This throne room was the site of a climactic showdown between Jedi and Sith and the Battle of Endor. I'm sorry, but the Emperor's Throne Room packaging is too cool to leave out of this review. So we're going to send a little bit of love, first of all, towards the packaging and the work that Hasbro has done to this to make this really look like a vintage Kenner packaging, right down to the fact that Kenner is listed down below, along with the Star Wars The Vintage Collection. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the box right now, just to kind of show you what it looks like on the side. There's the Emperor with his electricity effects, and basically we're just replicating the same image on the other side. I did have to cut little seals on the sides. There's, well, this one was kind of now tucked inside, but I had to cut the other one. And then once you've cut that, you just take the whole sleeve of the box and slide it off like this. And just gonna put that to the side. And inside, you can see there's the emperor sitting in his throne. Looks like he's gesturing. It almost looks like he's a conductor, but he's sitting inside of his throne room. And then in the back, you can see sort of the battle scene from, I think that's Return, obviously at Return of the Jedi. And then this can also open up too. Yeah, you see, you see, this is why I didn't want to leave this out. And you can open this up completely and sort of give yourself a very open scene where you can actually have uh, the Star Wars figures on both the sides. A nice little also touch of detail that they did to do as well is on the front drawer, just below the figure, you can slide this open. And inside you'll see his cane. There's Luke's lightsaber and a couple of hands with some electricity effects. And that slides in underneath. The way they've also designed the packaging is clever because you can take the whole Emperor part and remove it completely so that underneath all of this, which we'll go back to after we've had a look at the figure itself, you can remove this tray completely and have yourself an actual throne room scene, complete with, again, little side struts on both the sides where you can actually have some extra figures. Yeah, like I said, it was way too cool to leave out of this review. Let's get a closer look at the Emperor and his throne. As for the Emperor, by the way, I'd also like to thank, too, the folks over at Hasbro that did provide the sample of the Star Wars Vintage Collection Emperor that we could have a look at. But if you guys are curious just as to how tall the Emperor does stand, of course, happy to oblige, happy to oblige. We're going to bring in the ruler. Emperor is fully standing up and not currently sitting down is four inches in height or about 10 centimeters tall pulling back on the old camera so you guys can see everything that's packed with palpatine sorry i didn't mean to spin on you guys the figure comes in clue with that window that we saw earlier when we looked at the packaging now being that hasbro made it as something that's removable means that if you aren't fully married to the idea of displaying the figure with all of that large diorama and cardboard just leave it out completely and instead display the figure with the window. The window is fully standing as it does have sculpted feet down below. And the window has been molded in plastic, but the actual battle scene has been done in cardboard. You can see all the ships in the background here from Return of the Jedi. What's clever on Hasbro's part is that the cardboard is attached on the back by three screws. So when you unscrew these, you can bring these away from one another and you can take this entire cardboard piece and flip it around. Now, while you can flip it around, that means that all of a sudden you can go from having ships in the background to just a completely barren space scene. I think that's a great touch on their part, being it's something that you can remove and flip around. Um, it, it's certainly a good means of displaying the figure. Like I said, if you don't have a lot of space, yeah, you could use the cardboard diorama, which I'll bring back in, in a second. But having a window being a separate piece like that still brings you into the world of Star Wars without having to commit more shelf space to do it. I'm going to just slide over these accessories just for the time being. We're going to move also Emperor out of the way. And I'm just going to bring back in that cardboard diorama that we looked at earlier. Now, again, the cardboard does open up to have really a full play scene on both the sides. You sort of will have to kind of stretch things out in order to actually accommodate figures. You may even want to put something underneath this. So if you have figures on it, the figures aren't, well, you may also even just want to force this just down a little bit further. But yeah, I would probably put some support struts underneath that. Now, again, you can take the window and really left on its own, it still gives you the scene from Star Wars. But then if you take the window, you can put that in front of it, take then the throne room, put it in front of that. And yeah, you got yourself a nice little scene.
You can also really take the sides and fold them back up. When we talked about that earlier, take these, fold these back up. The thing about it though, the number of times I've already done this, these, these sides don't stay together. So if you did want to maybe make this a little less, maybe less space involved, you may want to maybe just take a little bit of tape and tape the top of this to keep this together. That might be an available option displaying the figure as well. I don't even know if I did show you guys this, but it is finished on all the sides. It's even finished also from the back there as well. So even if you wanted to have, say, Luke Skywalker pose, this looks like really the elevator entrance where Luke Skywalker comes out to see the Emperor. You can display it that way as well. Anyways, we're going to just take this. We've spent a fair bit of time talking about just the cardboard diorama, but love the touches that they did incorporate with this release of the Emperor. We'll just move this off to the side, and then we'll just kind of bring this back in bring back in the emperor who's now I'm sure been moved several times already you got to think that that's really ticking him right off but let's look at the other accessories that come include with the emperor starting with I suppose the smallest you get Luke's light lightsaber the thing about the lightsaber though while it's been painted well it's pretty gummy it's a very soft plastic they've decided to sculpt this with my guess is they probably did sculpt this in a softer plastic so it'd be less likely to break but you can see very very much how soft and malleable that plastic is can see some nice gold been painted on there as well again really nicely replicating the lightsaber that luke skywalker would have had that the emperor would have had currently in his possession he does also come included with his cane and unlike the lightsaber the cane is while still pliable plastic feels like it's got a little more of a density to it it looks like it's actually been forged out of volcanic rock that looks really sharp i like the way they've done that it's not sharp by the way Although you wouldn't want to be running with this in your hands for the risk that you could be poking your eyes out. The cane da does fit into the Emperor's hands. So like, for example, if you did want to display the Emperor standing rather than sitting, you can either have the cane, for example, displayed in his hand like, like this, or sort of he's just carrying it in his hand. Slide it all the way down here. You can have him displayed like that. Or you can also have the cane, and I've taken the time of doing that. You can also have the cane with his hand turned this way, and have him resting against the handle, which I guess works best if you really wanted to have the Emperor with the cane in his hand. I mean, it certainly looks like he needs the cane to stand up. And believe you me, the figure does have some difficult times standing up. So there's that way of displaying the figure as well. Although this way, the cane doesn't sit as well in his hands and definitely will fall out of his hands if you're not too careful. You can see right there. The figure also comes with some electricity hands, which I'll change out in a second. Just actually get Emperor laying down for a second because he's going to have some tough time falling. Um, he does come with the electricity hands. Those are done in a translucent blue plastic. And it's really smart the way they've done this. You can see by the fact that the peg on the bottom is still that translucent blue, that they've actually sculpted all the hand in the blue as well, and then just gone in there to paint the extra touches of the flesh tone. I think that's really smart the way they've done that. And of course, that's going to plug into his hands also in a second figure also comes included with of course his throne chair the chair is something that can turn although really looking at it i mean it would be no different than really taking the throne chair and just simply turning it yourself did you just turn that no i just did i just literally did that but it does rotate it does technically rotate it's it's unnecessary really the fact that you're just you know this this or this this but yeah this this bottom section can be detached I don't know really why you would want to detach it, but it just plugs onto the bottom like that. And actually the throne is nicely painted. The little buttons and knobs painted on the side there as well in all their unique coloring. Paint is really cleanly applied here. If you did want to replicate the way it looks from the movie, I think he has the lightsaber, what, on this side? You sort of have to rest it against these buttons. Not something I feel the most confident doing. You can see I'm just balancing it really against those knobs. You want this don't you yeah so just be, just be really careful when you're plugging that in place i almost feel like as if if you're already going to have yourself a luke skywalker you probably don't need yourself another lightsaber that i feel like they probably should have just put a peg on there and a hole somewhere on the chair where you could have plugged it in on either side so that you wouldn't run the risk of it falling because other than that you're literally just resting it against those buttons and that's not good for anybody a throne chair is really nicely painted the interior seat cushions done in a very dark evil purple. Is there such a thing as a dark evil purple? I, I think there is. A really nice dark purple that they've used. And it's not quite a black throne either. It's sort of like an off gray color. Very dark gunmetal gray. Decent looking throne chair though. 
So, uh, as I said, like Emperor, you can either have him standing or sitting in the chair. I'm probably going to be leaning more to the latter and having the figure sitting inside the chair. But just in, also, if you guys want to see what it looks like, we're going to just remove his hands. These hands, by the way, are just on pegs. You just pop those out of the sockets. There we go. And do the exact same thing on the other side. Going to get some electricity going here. Pop that out. And then we're going to get the hands, making sure, of course, thumbsies go in. Going to plug that in place. And then do the exact same thing on the other side. The only thing that's really absent from this release of Emperor, if you are going to give him the electricity like this, he doesn't really have the most evilest, evilest of faces for, I think, shocking people. There is also that standalone Emperor that we are going to actually be looking at in an upcoming video. He's going to have much more of a sinister look on his face. And I believe he also does come with the electricity hands. But if you want just a more neutral Emperor... I don't think I'm going to display this figure necessarily with the electricity. I appreciate the fact that they did include it, but I think for the fact he does come with the window, he comes and include with the throne chair. I'm just going to display, I think, the emperor in his chair. I just want to show you guys what it looked like with the hands in place. Again, we just reverse quickly the steps that we started with. Plug that back into place. And where's the other hand? The other hand is right here. Before we actually put emperor into his chair, I certainly did want to spend some time showing you guys what the emperor looked like. They're mixing mediums here up. So like while his body underneath, I'm just going to lift up his skirting. So you can see like it's a full plastic figure underneath as it should be. Then what they've done is they've wrapped him or covered him in a fabric cloak. So he's got like the cloak underneath and he's got the robe that goes over top of it. The only thing that is part of the robe that isn't actually fabric is the part that goes around his head. You can see like this is hard plastic. It is actually something that can remove. So if you did want to see what Emperor looks like underneath the cloak, simply just take the back of it and just pull it around the front of his face. It's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Figured I would be fighting to get that off, but actually really quite easy. And this is a soft plastic that they've used. Uh, certainly unhooded, you can see the full sculpt of what Hasbro put into this figure. The only thing I would say from looking at it like this, it's so strange to see Emperor without his without his cloak without his hood over top is his hair really sticks out quite a lot from the back you see that right there i'm not used to really seeing i know emperor or palpatine certainly does have the hair on the back but i'm so used to really seeing him in this outfit at least with the cloak hood over top i'm just going to be displaying it with that coloring is pretty good on it sculpt is good i like the darker colors of that blood red that they've airbrushed around his eyes Hopefully you guys can actually see his eyes. Let's get zoomed in here. How far can we get in there? Oh, that's pretty good. You guys can see the sculpting and paint of his eyes. Really nice work on Hasbro's part. There is a strange line right here. Not to the point where I feel like that's a complaint because that line is only going to be covered anyways by his hood. But I know it's like it's got this weird line that goes right above his ear. It's not even following his, his hair level either. This side it does. But this side sort of sticks out a little bit further. I don't know why it's there. It's probably just out of the mold like that. The head sculpt is really good on this figure. Um, actually, you know what? Before we put this back on, it's probably a good idea to look at the figure's articulation. Starting with his head, which is not something I would be able to do with his hood on. Head is on a ball joint, so it can rotate all the way around. It looks down, it looks up, and it, of course, can look back and forth this way as well. The arms being, of course, that, well, just roll up his arms so you can see what's going on here. Figure does have a elbow bend. It's a little harder to see. There's the hinge joint right there. It does bend back and forth. It does rotate this way. And the hand also rotates all the way around. But of course, yeah, his shoulders. His shoulders can do almost a full rotation. But of course, you're going to be kind of tightening the fabric as you're doing it. So yeah, you can either have him in a kind of walking pose. Or you can have the hands up if he's shooting the electricity. Of course, the arms also do come out as well. That's that's very helpful. Uh, for his upper torso, I'm just going to move the cloak out of the way, the robe out of the way, so you guys can see. They have sculpted actually underneath that, uh, like a Jedi tunic. And that does rotate back and forth. doesn't seem to be on ball joints, so it's just a straight swivel. Legs split out. You can go forward and back on the legs. They swivel at the top. There's a single bend at the knee. Lower rotation. I know this is all more effective if I actually lift, move that out of the way. This bends back and forth. This rotates back and forth. And then he does have foot articulation. I guess... That's one thing I have one problem with when it comes to this figure is the way that his feet are posed. Even though he does have a knee bend, and even though technically he does have also a foot bend, um, if you look at his feet, so you guys can see, if you look at his feet, they're not flat. You think, okay, you can just straighten these so they're completely flat, but his feet always seem to want to be on a slight angle. 
this can become a bit more problematic if you want to have the figure standing with his cane. The figure technically does have peggles on the undersides of his feet, but Hasbro didn't include a display stand with this release of, of, of the Emperor. So if you want to have him standing, first of all, let's get his hood back on. Just to get the hood on, by, by the way, you just put it on an angle and then just wrap it around his head. I think that finishes the job much, much nicer. But yeah, if you did want to have the figure standing, standing seemed to be more of an issue for the Emperor. Not only is the uh, the force a problem with the Emperor, and I guess also kind of having his underlings de de defying him near the end of the movie, but his other problem is he has some difficulty standing. I'm actually surprised I can get him to stand the way he is right now. You sort of have to get him on just the just the right spot, and then he's not going to fall over on you. And then, of course, yeah, you can easily use the cane also if you want to help stabilize the figure if you didn't want to have him standing i probably would even just say use a display stand so you're not going to have that issue at all but for me displaying the emperor i'm going to be putting him in his chair and that can easily be effectively done by just taking his legs bringing his legs forward bending his knees like that and then just go ahead and take the throne and just fit you sort of have to get emperor underneath this part and then just straighten out his feet yeah that's going to look a lot nicer Again, there is that second single release Emperor that doesn't come include with its throne. That's the Emperor I'm probably going to want to display with a lightning effect. But being that this one already comes included with a throne chair, definitely the route I'm going to be going when it comes to displaying the figure. The thing about it, though, is, again, the, the lightsaber really isn't in a good place. You sort of have to rest. I guess you could rest it on his robe, too. But it's so very small. It's way too small that I know I'm going to lose it if I'm not too careful. Then we could get the scene window going on there. Put the Emperor in front of that. Yeah, you got yourself a nice display. Whether or not you do decide to use the actual cardboard diorama, you got to at least give credit where credit is due for Hasbro to actually incorporate that as part of their packaging because they easily could have shrunk the footprint of the packaging and just released it enough to accommodate the window, to accommodate, of course, the chair and the emperor sitting inside of it. But the fact that they actually included an openable diorama scene with the, the actual throne is a nice touch on their part. And one of way, one of another ways that you can actually use the other figures that Hasbro has put out. Certainly ones that would have made up the Emperor's throne room, like if you have some royal guards, for example. Easily, you could just have those displayed with the diorama. Really nice touches on Hasbro's part to include that. Gotta say, I'm pretty pleased with the way Hasbro packaged their Palpatine. I'm spitting again, aren't I? Instead of actually just putting the figure inside of a clear tray and sliding inside the box, taping up and sending it to stores, thinking rather outside the box figur figuratively and literally, Hasbro actually put their packaging so you slid it out of the box, you can unfold it, and you've got instantly a cardboard diorama replicating the throne room he had from Return of the Jedi. Now for me, I don't have as much space to put out something like that, and I can certainly rally behind the collectors of longtime Star Wars collectors out there that, yeah, have a shelf space of 100 figures. You're not going to be moving those figures out of the way anytime soon in order to put out a cardboard diorama. As interesting as that diorama is it's going to be taking up a lot of space let's let's face facts so at least they give you a plan b and i almost prefer more of the latter because at least with plan b they give you a plastic framed window that still looks like the throne room and takes up a lot less space it serves as a better background piece where you can still have all your figures in the front it's just again a matter of preference you have the space for the cardboard diorama a little less space to work with guy I'm putting up my hand behind the camera. I'm going to instead go this route. And at least they include that along with the Palpatine. Now, as for the Emperor himself, he comes included with his throne chair, comes with his cane, comes with his electricity hands, and he comes with really the smaller lightsaber, which it's nice to include with the Emperor, but there's really not a place that you can put it on his chair. You have to sort of just rest it on it. Or if you have the Emperor sitting in the chair, you have to just kind of rest it onto his sleeve because of the size of the fabric robe that they put on him, which is a good robe too, there's just really not any space anywhere available to put the, the lightsaber. And because it's just a loose piece, I'm worried if I was to bang it, that's going to go on the floor. Kitty is going to take that lightsaber and it's going to be gone and I'm never going to see it ever again. So nice included accessories. I like at least that they gave you two different ways of displaying the Emperor. Again, I'm going more, more with the latter, but I got to still give some awarded points for creativity when it came to packaging the Emperor with that cardboard diorama. Nice touch on Hasbro's part. A big thank you, though, to the folks over at Hasbro that did provide the sample of the Star Wars Vintage Collection Emperor's Throne Room that we could have a look at in this review. Have you guys picked up this one for yourself? If you have, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section. If you haven't, based on this review, is this something that you guys would want to pick up for your own collection space? And also, speaking of space... 
the very end of this review, popping up would be a playlist for Star Wars. That takes place in space, after all. It was, yeah, I had to connect more dots, but it, I, they did match. They, they were somewhat connected. If you guys are also new to this channel, and I hope you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification so you get those friendly reminders whenever new videos are popping up. And yes, keep peepers peeled while we have wrapped up things for the Emperor's Throne Room. There will be more Star Wars reviews coming soon to this channel. So as always, make sure you're coming back on a regular basis. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.